it's time to get uncomfortable. Take advantage of the day when you can and the coolest drive-in movie theater. Welcome to The Hopefulist, a daily talk show hosted by veteran broadcaster Wendy McClure. Join Wendy each day as she shares her life lessons that transformed her from perpetual pessimist to the ultimate hopefulist. The perfect morning show to get you caught up on the day's top stories while sharing insights that will lead to positive transformation and bring out the hopefulist in you. For more inspiration, visit hopefulist.com. And now, here's your host and hopefulist, Wendy McClure. Well, hello there and welcome to a Wednesday. It is May 27th, 2020, day 255. I've got to get on Ellen. I'm pretty much... uh pretty much resigned to the fact that it won't happen this season. If she's even still doing new shows, I'm figuring she's not going to have me on at this point. So I will continue my countdown. I will continue my call to be on the show. I will continue to appeal to her. And hopefully uh, at the beginning of next season, like September, she'll have me and Tucker on. Uh, And we can share our message with the entire world. Fingers crossed, right? Some pretty cool story that I saw on the news this morning. The Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, that is where the Super Bowl was played this past year. They are turning it into a drive-in movie theater. The cars will be able to drive right onto the field. No need to get out of the car. They will have waitress service for snacks and drinks. No word on how much the tickets will be, but pretty cool idea. I would love to go see a movie at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. That would be awesome. Same for Giant Stadium. I would go to Giant Stadium for that, not for a Giants game. I've been to Giant Stadium. I actually was at Giant Stadium, the new one, the very first night they were open. Because Bon Jovi had a concert to celebrate the opening of the brand new stadium. And of course, Bon Jovi, one of my favorites, but not only Bon Jovi, but Train, my other favorite, was the opening act. So we went up there to see that show. Very cool stadium. Stadiums are cool. You know, I don't care who you are. Stadiums are cool. Love going to the stadium. Joe and I will often hit Lincoln Financial Field for a temple game each year. It's not nearly as expensive as an NFL game. And in my opinion, it's even more fun because I'm a marching band geek. And uh, I love to see the marching band. Not only do they have the show at halftime, sometimes pregame, But then the band plays, you know, throughout the whole game, certain songs here and there. But they also break up the band into little mini bands that go into the concourse of the stadium area and just put on little shows. I've uh, recorded a couple of them. They're so cool. They're so cool. So uh, I would love this idea of the drive-in theater, maybe – Giant Stadium or the Link will consider such an idea. That would be really, really fun, I think. Yesterday was an amazing, beautiful, sunny day. I have to admit, I decided to take a nap pretty early yesterday. I had to take my car in for some service. Got back home. Did a little bit of work. Not a lot, just a little. And decided I was going to hit the hay Pretty early yesterday for a nice little nap. I woke up around 12.30. Had a lot, a lot on my to-do list. Woke up at 12.30. Walked out back to let the dog out. And brilliant sunshine. Warm temperatures. And I went, ooh. Ran into the bathroom. Changed into my bathing suit. Grabbed my book. And sat outside in the sun for the rest of the day. Finally came in about 4.30. Yeah. It was glorious. Got to take advantage of these days when you can, if you can. 
Luckily, my boss lets me slack off. I didn't get any of my work done. But that's the great thing about being your own boss, (laughs) is I'm going to let it slide. Go ahead, Wendy. You take the day. Because like I said, it was so disappointing over the weekend. We thought it was going to be nice weather. They lied to us. It was not what nice weather. So the fact that it was nice weather yesterday, I was like, you know what? I don't care. I am going to sit in the sun and read my book. And I finished it. Finished yet another book. Book number 172 in quarantine. I'm kidding, of course, but I have read a lot of books. I started another one already. I'm already about 30% uh, through it. This is why I don't remember books that I read because I go through them so quickly. And, you know, you tell me a title of a book. I'm like, I don't know. I probably read it. Probably. So whenever I do have, say, a book club meeting about a book that I've read in the past, I always have to go back over the synopsis or what have you to remind myself of the characters and the plot and all kinds of things. But I do love to read. I love me some reading time. Got a new bathing suit over the weekend. Did I tell you that? I'm very excited about the new one. I had ordered two, and they came separately, so I did get my second one. And this is just a regular old tankini. The other one that I got was more of like a a bathing suit dress. You know, I said before that usually that's for like the older people. I liked it. It was very nice. But the tankini fits very well. I'm very happy with the way it looks. So I have to maintain my healthy eating plan so that I don't put on any weight. Because if I put on any weight, it'll be a little too tight. So that is some motivation for me to stick to my plan. So like I said, I got to take advantage of the beautiful sunny day. And it got me to thinking, what are some of your favorite summer activities? When it comes to my choice, Excuse me. The um, first thing that always comes into my head is uh, boating. I love being out on the boat. We do not have a boat, so we have to depend on others to get boat rides. And we get, we get enough of them. Trust me. I mean, you know, a lot of people know how much I love boating, and they offer rides to me often. Joe could care less. Often, actually, he'll, he'll pass. Yeah, I'm going to stay home. You go. You have fun, hon. Okay, I'll see you in a couple hours. But when it comes to what I do the most, it's got to be sitting outside reading. Soaking up some sun, reading my book, sitting on my own deck. I also very much enjoy, and I'm going to have to do this today, check out um, Walmart because I got this uh, float a couple of years back that has been amazing. Big, huge float. It's got handles on it. It's got a spot for drinks. It's got a a rope that you can tie up. And I need to tie up here where I live because I'm on a very active lagoon. Boats go by constantly. So I can't just kind of free float because I'll get hit by a boat. So it has a nice little rope that you can tie up on. And we lost the rope last year. (laughs) And I remember we got it at Walmart. It was like twelve bucks, and I got at least, I got at least three or four summers out of it. So I have to get a new one. And normally I would just go to Walmart, but I think that I might just check out online. I do enjoy floating. I've talked about this before. Just floating in the lagoon to me is one of the most relaxing things. It's just so relaxing. I love it. But here's the thing. If I had a boat, I would have to say that would be my favorite. Because you know what I would do if I had a boat? I would take the boat out, anchor up somewhere, and sit in the boat and read in the sun. (laughs) You think I'm kidding? I am not kidding. That is what I do. No doubt about it. I also enjoy kayaking And I like riding my bike. I haven't really gotten to either of those two yet. The wind has just been crazy, which makes those activities a little bit more difficult. So I wanted to hear from you. What is your favorite summer activity? 
Jim says vacation. Marcy says reading under an umbrella on the beach. Nancy says too many to choose. Just love the boat, the beach with my toes in the water, walking the boardwalk with ice cream, outdoor concerts, bonfires and s'mores. How can you pick just one? Joe says barbecue beers and listening to music with my wife. Oh, he sounds like a sweetheart, doesn't he? Adele says eating. Oh, and drinking. Michelle says going to the beach. Elizabeth says visits and we don't expect much this summer. I replied to her, yeah, we love having company, too. It's one of my favorite things is to have company. I do have some people lined up to come. I don't think anybody has canceled yet. We shall see. Cheryl says boating. Michelle says sitting my big butt on the beach and listening to music like that, too. Andrew says swimming, barbecue, drinking. And Kevin says bending elbows while listening to the shore's best music. I guess that means he likes going out to listen to to the Jersey Shore's best music. Love it. Love all of those activities. I would do any one of them at any time, especially the vacation one. Of course, you don't have to vacation just in the summertime. You can vacation whenever you want. Today's blog posts were still concentrating on fear, and today we're talking about getting uncomfortable because the only thing we can count on is change. Change is the one constant in our life. And most of the time, we are very uncomfortable with change. We don't like it. Most of the time, we see it as bad. But change can be for the good as well. We often don't start a new change because it always seems uncomfortable. That's a given. Here is a huge secret. The faster you embrace change, the faster you will thrive in life. There are some things that will hopefully always be a constant, like your family and your health and the amount of income that you have. But if this pandemic has shown us anything, it's how fast our world can change overnight, quite literally. How have you handled all the changes forced upon us these last two months? Keeping in mind that something like this is possible and can can happen again. How can you move forward in a way so that it doesn't hit you as hard next time? What can you do differently? How is your health? Were you extremely worried about getting the virus? Can you start improving your health so you don't feel so susceptible next time? If there is a next time, what are some of the things you actually enjoyed about quarantine? What of those things can you keep incorporating into your life? What did you hate? How can you reduce the likelihood of having to face that again? What can you do differently to make money? Change can be hard, no doubt about it, but it can also be exciting, thrilling, and life-altering in the best ways. I was completely distraught when I lost my radio job last year, but I'm loving life now. But I used to hate change. I would literally say things like, why am I always having to challenge myself? What is wrong with a comfort zone? I thought that is why we worked so hard so we could get to a place where we didn't have to do that anymore. But now I realize that it's the challenges that keep life interesting, exciting, and fulfilling. When we are comfortable, we get bored. And boredom leads to unhappiness. We have to keep learning, growing, and getting better. If we aren't, then we're likely getting worse and probably dying a little each day. It's the new things we look forward to the most. Am I right? And part of the reason why we constantly need new challenges is the thrill of what we have already achieved wears out really quickly. I've been dying to tell this story. I've been taking an online course through Yale And in it, the professor talks about how quickly new things become boring to you. She uses the example to her students about the euphoria they felt when they found out they had been accepted to Yale. She says, you likely danced around, called everyone you knew, couldn't wait to get started. You're like jumping up and down. She asks them if they wake up every morning with that same sort of enthusiasm when they are heading to class. No, of course not. (laughs) It's the same with a new job. When you first get that job offer, you are likely super psyched, can't wait to get started. 